Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Joe Dominijani. I'm the President and Chief Operating Officer of Armada. Um, I'm joining you from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, from our offices. Like many of you, we're working remotely, but I came in with a very limited crew in our offices today to provide this presentation to you. So I hope you sit back and relax and enjoy the presentation. I think you'll find it of interest. Uh, I want to thank Blue Yonder, first of all, for inviting me to speak about managing supply chains during a disruption. I'm certainly disappointed that we couldn't meet in person in Denver, but I think we've all become very familiar with virtual meetings. And so I don't think today will be much different than what you have experienced and we have for the past month or longer. It's of course more than a coincidence that I modified my presentation a bit to address some of the challenges facing supply chains as a result of the coronavirus that we're all facing. But the learnings that we've taken away from this worldwide event highlights some of the challenges that we could experience in managing disruption due to other events that could be just more disruptive in the future or just as disruptive. Let's hope nothing comes close to the disruption we've experienced in our economy and our businesses as a result of COVID-19. There are a few key points I want to focus on during my presentation. First, I'll talk about disruption and how unpredictable changes impact supply chains. Next, I'll discuss various options for managing disruption, including areas that are key to assessing and managing change, as well as orchestrating shifts in supply chain requirements. And finally, I'll talk a little bit about digital tools that Armada is developing to help with supply chain management. So when we think of disruption, we tend to view this word as describing a crisis or crisis management. So first of all, what is the crisis? The coronavirus has certainly changed the way we've acted, lived and behaved for the past several weeks or a couple of months for some of us. It's created a very unexpected crisis. Uh, we could never have predicted that a pandemic would spread across our nation and the world and cause such disruption to our everyday lives. And the impact, of course, on our economy has been immeasurable. The pandemic crisis has caused us a shift in supply chains that we've never experienced before and has affected almost every industry. And in fact, you hear about supply chain disruption almost every day in the news, even the president's task force meeting talks about supply chain challenges. So when we look at crisis management, we, we look at ways to deal with the unexpected, not really dissimilar to managing glitches and supply chains that we deal with every day. First, we have to define the crisis. And Armada, by the way, works primarily with national restaurant chains. So in our world, the COVID-19 crisis drove a sudden closure of dining services throughout the entire country. Next, we have to determine how much time we have to solve the problem. In the case of Armada, restaurants, our restaurant clients were still open for either takeout, delivery, or drive-through. So the, the issue was really immediate and defined in days, not weeks. The problem became more complicated by what would work and not work for restaurants considering safety and sanitation concerns. Finally, what's the solution? Usually it's very complex in most supply chains and requires the use of significant data for evaluating, assessing, and devising a solution to react to shifts in demand requirements. It's usually complicated by unique circumstances, but some solutions can be replicated through autonomous responses that will provide for the reaction to future challenges. When I prepared for this presentation, it was really ironic that it coincided with the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 13 mission in April 1970. Most of you aren't old enough to remember the actual date when the mission occurred, but you may have seen the movie about the event. Of course, it starred Tom, starred Tom Hanks as Commander Jim Lovell, who commanded the Apollo 13 mission. This is a picture of Jim Lovell. He's the guy way to the right. I actually was fortunate enough to meet him a couple of years ago. Uh, obviously, a, a true American. And Jim Lovell faced a crisis in space that was never experienced before, and he was a key factor in identifying and solving the problem facing this crew. The crisis that they experienced 
was completely unexpected. You may recall an oxygen tank explosion occurred in the command module. So the explosion created the need for critical thinking by commander level. First of all, they only had a limited amount of time to solve the problem as the spacecraft was hurling through space at 5,000 feet per second. They were losing oxygen and losing power at the same time. Now, of course, we're talking about the lives of three men, not millions of people affected by the coronavirus, but similarities do exist. The crew had to act quickly to solve several problems with the assistance of some key support staff on the ground. Remember, the shortened voyage was just six days. Don't we all rely on our teams to solve problems for our supply chains every day? What if those responses could be automated or better yet, predicted? One of the most critical figures in the Apollo 13 mission was the flight director. His name was Gene Krantz. Gene is uh, to the right of this picture, and you see Ed Harris on the left. Ed was the actor who played Gene Krantz in the film. Gene always wore a white vest during the missions. As a kid, I always thought that was really prestigious. Um, and that was that signified his, his white team, which was the na name of his team. And that is now hanging in the Smithsonian. But Gene coined a phrase while they were solving the Apollo 13 problems during the mission. While demanding that every engineer and technician who designed or built the Apollo space capsule be called in to engineer a solution, Gene said, we've never lost a man in space and we're not going to lose one under his watch. He said, failure is not an option. That was his idea of crisis management. As flight director, Gene Krantz was the orchestrator of the mission. Much like a supply chain orchestrator, he made critical decisions about the mission. He had to make the decisions very quickly and use data and tools available to provide a solution to the astronauts, which ultimately led to their successful return. But solutions were based on teams of people scurrying to pull together manuals and documentation on every piece of equipment on that spacecraft. In fact, one of his analysts came in to him, saw this in the movie, and he said, Hey, Gene, I just ran the numbers, and they're going to run out of power if we don't shut down the command mod module immediately. Now, that was 50 years ago, but even today, that's how some supply chains operate, by a team of people running numbers to develop a plan. The goal of any supply chain, considering a digital transformation, is to ensure that every possible contingency is planned for and to some degree predicted in advance. Whether it's the special sauce needed to make a Big Mac every day at a McDonald's or screws that are needed to make a Ford F-150 pickup truck, manual intervention has to be virtually eliminated to ensure the utmost efficiently, or that sandwich or that truck can't, make, can't be made. So as I mentioned, our model works primarily in the restaurant, restaurant space with large restaurant clients. We service roughly 25,000 restaurants around the country. We provide outsourced supply chain services to these chains, including supply chain engineering and optimization, as well as warehousing and transportation management. The COVID-19 impact on the restaurant industry was, was really devastating, like in many industries with employee layoffs, loss of sales resulting from the stay in place orders that were issued by most government agencies. But in the restaurant space, it also resulted in the need to shift focus immediately to provide services outside of dine-in, because of course dine-in was eliminated. So it caused an immediate shift in focus on delivery through services such as Grubhub or Uber Eats, DoorDash, as well as through uh, drive through for many restaurants, those who had drive throughs available. Other options were also developed, including limited takeout menus, um, and uh, other opportunities to ensure that these restaurants could, could stay open in some capacities. The restaurants that only provided dine-in services were now suddenly developing takeout menus to allow them to stay open. And there was an immediate increase in demand for products such as takeout containers all, all of a sudden, as well as sanitation and personal protective equipment such as face masks that were not as critical or needed in the past. In fact, we helped one client with a distribution of a half a million face masks that were shipped 
from overseas into the United States and had to be distributed immediately. Again, this was something very, very novel. Some of the products were brand new to the restaurants and short supply like face masks, which resulted in a bit of a scramble with either existing suppliers or alternate suppliers, as I mentioned. In the retail space as well, retailers were, they just weren't prepared for what occurred. Uh, shortages of cleaning supplies and toilet paper were rampant. Most stores were allocating products to consumers. I mean, we've never experienced anything like this before. Even certain food products uh, were in short supply since cooking at home now became popular again or necessary versus eating out. So, as I mentioned, uh, Armada, Mara, we focused on supply chain management and tools to ensure that we can orchestrate and protect a short supply for our restaurant clients. The ongoing development of the orchestrator concept is key to Armada. Armada is taking a, a journey in, to a future in which supply chain orchestration, not just supply chain management, will be critical developing more advanced solutions for our clients and also executing a more profitable response to supply chain disruptions. This includes execution of end-to-end -end supply chain, improving processes to deliver supply chain services, and most importantly, staying agile and orchestrating required changes in supply chain. The real ultimate goal here is to link data and use tools that both predict supply chain needs as well as prescribe solutions for changes that occur. This creates a what we'll referred to as a more intelligent supply chain, one that is digitally enabled. When supply chain disruptions occur, like some of the ones that I just mentioned, managing, managing the immediate impact of the disruption without the necessary technology to orchestrate appropriate changes, whether it be in inventory management, purchase orders, shipping, or warehouse requirements is typically pretty inefficient and certainly inaccurate it results in a bit of a guessing game. Many times with data that cannot be processed in real time without the assistance of technology. So what do experts say about crisis planning? First, it's really critical to prioritize tasks that lie ahead. What are the challenges in level of importance? Do the challenges lie in sourcing a product, moving a product, storing a product, or consuming a product, or really all of the above? Next, we have to evaluate the need for certain steps that have to occur and develop a game plan or roadmap for success. Take stock of every available asset from, from suppliers, warehouses, and trucking companies to plan for a shift in demand. And last but not least, it's important to establish teams and just as importantly, delegate to those teams specific tasks that are based on the priorities that you set as a leader. Focusing on communication and coordination and allowing teams to problem solve is critical. The use of tools is critically important and digital tools are certainly critical to allow your supply chain teams to make these decisions with minimal human interaction by introducing tools, many of which we've heard about machine learning, artificial intelligence, internet of things to develop accurate responses to these demand shifts. I want to talk a little bit about a digital platform that Armada is developing with our partners at Blue Yonder, which we label Profitable Response Orchestration, or PRO. Our PRO platform is incorporating the technology of the Luminate Control Tower developed by Blue Yonder to power its supply chain orchestration capabilities and permit us to jointly develop tools that will drive agile supply chain solutions on a digital scale. The design of our orchestration platform permits the use of technology to make supply chain decisions based on shifts in demand with the ability to hopefully predict changes that will occur with reasonable certainty and prescribe solutions for our clients. We, like many companies, have tremendous access to data, but like most companies, uh, we realize that the data we obtain can be used to assist our clients in orchestrating their supply chains. That means taking existing data and using it in a way that allows a company to predict and pro provide these solutions and prescribe solutions in managing the flow of product. Since we ultimately work with consumers as our end users who drive volume through our restaurant chains, 
our clients are managing changes in velocity and lines of supply based on the responses of consumers like you to things like traditional promotions, buy one, get one free, or seasonal changes that occur with summers in the restaurant business, certainly for takeout, drive through being busier than winters. This all requires a very rapid response to changes in consumer demand that today is very difficult to predict and measure. So let's talk about the typical challenges that occur with supply chains. There's usually gaps related to visibility, detection of issues, or, as well as gaps in responsiveness. This end-to-end -end visibility of production, warehousing, transportation, distribution through the entire supply chain is really key to orchestrating solutions. But most supply chains lack this information. They lack the visibility. They lack the transparency across their supply chain network. These issues combine with a essentially a siloed approach to manage supply chains results in significant efficiencies, potential disruptions, and, of course, excess costs. Many human, individual human touch points have significant data sets, uh, and they, they really play a role in decision making, but humans can't process that data quickly enough, and it leads to poor planning and execution if not managed in real time. There's typically a lack of, cent of centralized resource or orchestrator to act as that go-to person or tool to monitor product movement, movement from end to end and proactively mitigate that risk in the supply chain. As I said, it results in significant excess costs as well as lost opportunities. The goal, again, is to move away from these traditional challenges experienced by supply chains to an environment where supply chains are more connected and more agile to respond to these rapid changes. When we assess the problem that occurred in the restaurant industry, the stay-at-home orders in almost every state, in addition to the almost universal impact on risk, restaurants caused a huge impact on supply chains and a shift in direction. Clearly, nobody in our industry or any industry could have predicted the pandemic, but whether there's a shift in direction resulting from a health issue like a pandemic or a result of changes in consumer preferences, supply chains must be prepared for shifts, whether they're small or whether they're seismic. And the lack of orchestration and centralized management of data can result in very slow response times and, and some, sometimes very rigid responses that lack agility and responsiveness. Our model was able to react very quickly to manage our client supply chains after the immediate impact of restaurants being shut down. We, we couldn't have predicted the pandemic and its effect, but the event really highlighted some opportunities for change in our client environments to prepare them for future challenges. Should personal protective equipment be carried in inventory or are suppliers in the queue to provide them as needed? Should there be a contingency supply of cleaning and sanitation products? What kind of shift in distribution is required if, let's say, there's a COVID-19 infection in a warehouse? Like what alternate lines of supply are required if there's an infection in a supplier facility that has to shut down? We've seen all of these events occur. Fortunately, Armada and its clients have business continuity plans in place, like most companies. But the virus really highlighted some potential gaps, which can be built into a response network based on data gathered during this event, much of which can be used to build automated responses in the future. The use of the centralized platform that I refer to is part of a, a digital ecosystem which integrates various forms of technology is critically important to developing the solution of dealing with potential supply chain disruptions, which we refer to this as compliance and contingency orchestration inside of our Pro platform that I mentioned earlier. Our key elements of this platform, and the theme here is a connected supply chain supported by this digital platform and supply chain orchestrators to provide both compliance orchestration as well as contingency orchestration. Our model refers to this as a better way. Our better way of running supply chains is built on this model of integration and digitization. Compliance orchestration representing the ability to monitor and manage schedule blocking and tackling execution required in every supply chain, 
how well are we operating based on the supply chain roadmap that has been developed. While the contingency orchestration represents the ability to be agile and react to supply chain disruptions that occur. These concepts are supported by decisions and actions taken by a supply chain orchestrator that uses automated or semi-automated tools in managing supply chains. Armada, along with our partners at Blue Yonder, continue to develop tools that I mentioned that will permit daily responses in a supply chain to be effective in solving these everyday problems. We selected Blue Yonder's Eliminate Control Tower to assist us in making supply chain decisions in real time. We're still in the process of final development platform with uh, Blue Yonder using their Luminate technology, but the platform will permit the proper decision-making using information from the entire supply chain ecosystem. A day in the life of a connected supply chain includes every possible supply chain partner from the initial planning performed by supply chain planners and all the way to the ultimate end user. The network of supply chain must think together, communicate together, execute together in a seamless network of connected platforms. Unfortunately, platforms from each of the supply chain partners is typically disparate. So an orchestrated supply chain must be connected by an orchestration platform that's completely integrated to provide common direction. It's important to reimagine our standard processes and workflows and move from standardization to synchronization. We have to think differently about our supply chains and implement tools that build out our foundational layers including not just animation, automation, I'm sorry, but integration between all supply chain partners in the ecosystem. The ability to react or be agile when disruption occurs is measured in small increments. How quickly can a supply chain react is a measure of its ability to proactively manage changes such as immediate demand decline, such as that caused by the coronavirus that I mentioned. With the use of the Illuminate control tower technologies, our pro platform is being designed to react in real time to these demand shifts. Remember, our clients experience an almost immediate reaction to the spread of the virus, where for some of our restaurant clients, demand dropped as much as 80% or more. We were immediately able to respond by reducing our upstream requirements from suppliers and eliminate some product into the supply chain. We were also forced to find alternative lines of supply caused by demand shifts in various parts of the country. And the support was provided using our existing orchestration methods, but they're also being developed into a more digital response for future use. Many food service supply chains were flush with product inventory that would go out of code as a result of immediate and significant demand drops that literally over occurred overnight. In fact, some restaurant chains were fortunate to be able to move some of this product, such as excess chicken inventory, by moving it to retailers who were desperate for more protein products because more consumers were shifting their demand from restaurants to grocery stores. When there's a shift in demand, the driving attribute is the demand signal that is received from the end user. In our case, this means the demand from the restaurant. So the orchestrator is waiting for that demand signal and sends the demand information to suppliers, distributors, and transportation partners, whether it's trucking companies or railroads. The demand signals can be obtained through traditional modes, such as orders from the restaurants, retail establishments, or even manufacturing facilities. But traditional methods of demand assessing and communication really do not provide the real-time information concerning need changes that are occurring in the supply chain. Other methods of demand sensing, such as predictive analytics, also built into the orchestration platform, will be able to drive more immediate responses to these shifts in supply requirements. The orchestrator is making decisions using a centralized set of tools and data, which is funneled through a virtual situation room. Ultimately, the data sets are available through mobile access for remote users to provide notification or data access for required supply chain information. Supply chains must be tied together with other suppliers and their related data. 
supply chain partners are connected through the use of integrated information and technology, which allow for decisions to be made in a uniform and concerted fashion. Again, the driver here is someone who could facilitate a reaction to supply chain changes or disruptions through collaboration with all stakeholders using real-time information with integrated data sets to ensure that supply is not broken, but also doing so inside of a virtual platform that is digital and also has automated components. Ultimately, the debrief on solving supply chain disruption is narrowed down to three critical areas. Problem identification, first and foremost, is, is critical. The after action summary of addressing shifts in demand include being alerted to the disruption caused by the shift in demand in the first place. Having a centralized view of demand and supply through the eyes of the orchestrator provides for the use of real-time data to make prompt decisions. The adjustments that are developed in the supply chain are learned by the orchestration platform and built into problem-solving tools for use in identifying future adjustments that are required, occur, required. Anyone can make decisions when uh, no time element is in place, but the tools included in the Illuminate Control Tower and our pro platform provide for decisions that are timely and collaborative and provides us with the opportunity to automate or prescribe responses the next time the same issue is detected. Next, we develop a solution using tools available in our orchestration platform. The virtual situation room acts as the command center for decision making. The virtual situation room is equipped with orchestration professionals and control tower tools to facilitate the necessary changes resulting from demand shifts, which reduce or eliminate inefficiencies, which may be caused by lack of product or too much product being moved through the supply chain. The orchestrator uses intelligent tools and collaborates with supply chain partners to provide solutions to challenges occurring in the supply chain. Finally, orchestration results are scored to inform future response routines and to seek to automate responses. Orchestration responses are then archived for future use in determining a response to challenges in the supply chain. So there are a number of emerging technologies that we are evaluating and building our response platform that I'll mention here. Well, first of all, Pro, which I've mentioned. Our objective here is to drive supply chain decisions through our Pro platform, which is centered around digital business models, which are the framework for Pro. Predictive and proactive detection of supply chain changes or disruption is funneled through the platform. This level of visibility allows for collaborative decision making and related responses are then incorporated into an archive library of responses and included in digital playbooks to provide for responses through many enterprises which exist in the supply chain. Digital playbooks provide for prescriptive measures solving supply chain problems and driving routine tasks such as supply planning or transaction processing. The focus is in moving daily routines from a legacy environment to a digital environment. So routine tasks can be automated as much as possible. Data management and data quality that I mentioned earlier can also be automated through the use of master data validation as well as automation of pricing data. Data quality, I think, as we all know, is a significant issue in supply chains. More and more data is now available and can't be processed efficiently without necessary tools, automate both cleaning data and management of data. Verification and quality and remediation has to be automated to ensure that this data is useful. Prescriptive response routines are part of an evolution to operating an autonomous supply chain as well. Learnings from your supply chain behavior can be modeled into an automated platform, which coupled with an orchestrator can lead to less manual touch points and more predictive accuracy to operate a more efficient supply chain. Finally, supply chain at a glance insights are tied to both general metrics as well as to orchestration. These can include general insights related to specific objectives or policies. What situations need attention and what are the risks to the brand insights for restaurants, as an example? 
Also, what situations would benefit from attention? Benefits to the brand by proactive mitigation or intervention. This could include, also include the results of orchestration and scoring and benefits realized. So in summary, crisis management is usually performed in the face of operational disruption, whether a result of a virus, which is an example, or simply changes in consumer preferences as occurs in the restaurant industry. The key to providing responsive action and reaction to either slight or seismic changes in supply chains is the use of an orchestrator, in our opinion, supported by technologies such as the Luminate Control Tower platform to assist with autonomous or semi-autonomous decision-making. Digital platforms will undoubtedly be the key to future supply chain design. With the introduction of new and developing technologies, as I mentioned, including machine learning, AI, robotic process automation, and predictive analytics, to name a few. This is all part of the desire to digitally transform your supply chain. But digitization has to align with you, your supply chain strategy. And it's not for everyone, but it requires that we think differently about our supply chain, be more responsive to changes that occur than we are today. One of the keys to this transformation is not just building a digital platform like our modest pro platform, but doing so with a technology partner, in our case, Blue Yonder, who has the resources and capacity to support this design and development. At Armada, we realized pretty early on that if we were going to support our clients with future technology to enable us to help operate our supply chains, we knew we could not go it alone and succeed. So, in our opinion, a strong technology partner is the key to success. Finally, supply chain efficiencies also lead to good sustainable practices. And we certainly look at that at Armada. One year as an example, we were able to reduce our carbon emission footprint with our carrier group by 8% by driving more efficient practices in our network, partially as a result of, of optimized truckload performance enhanced by our orchestration efforts. So I wanna thank you for your attention today. I hope you found my presentation of interest. It was my pleasure presenting and I hope you have a, a wonderful day and enjoy the rest of the event.